In this video, we're going to talk about the store named attribute node. And the reason I wanted to make a video about this node specifically is because it's really useful, but I think the way it's named is a little bit unapproachable for an artist like me. To me, store named attribute sounds a bit like programmer speak rather than artist speak. And so I wanted to demystify what it does because in actual fact, it's super simple. So I'm just going to pull up this panel. And with a cube selected, I'm going to hit Shift F3 to convert this to a geometry node editor. And let's hit new to add some nodes to the cube. I'm going to keep the group input plugged in because I actually want to use the geometry that's in the viewport. But let's hit the home key just to zoom in a little bit. And then I'll zoom out and just hit the end key to dismiss the side panel. The first thing I'm going to do is subdivide the cube. So let's hit Shift A and search for subdivide. Let's select subdivide mesh and just drop it on that noodle. I'm going to hit the Q key in my viewport because I've got display wireframe from the viewport displays mapped to this key. And with that done, I can see the wireframe. So I'm just going to increase the subdivision level. Then I'm going to split this viewport, drag that over here. And let's head over to the data section and just open a spreadsheet. And that's just going to give me some information about all of the elements in my mesh. So currently we have the vertices displayed and all the information that's shown is just the location of every vertex in the cube. So next I'm just going to create a little bit of space. Then I'm going to hit Shift A and search for the store named attribute node. And let's just drop that onto this noodle here and I'll zoom out a little bit. So what exactly does this node do? Well, essentially what it does is that it allows you to add a label onto any geometry that you select. And that's literally it. You can think of it either as a label or maybe a tag or even a selection. You're basically saying, I'm going to apply this name to these elements so that I can recall them later. It's a little bit like using a vertex group in the data panel here, except that a named attribute isn't just applied to vertices. You can apply them to points, i.e. vertices, edges, faces, face corners, splines, instances, or layers. So as you can see, it's very, very versatile. So let's put this to the test. I'm just going to zoom in on my viewport a bit more closely. So by default, whatever attribute I store is going to be applied to the entire mesh. So for example, let's just create a new one. I'm going to call this label one. And if you're paying attention, you'll have noticed that a new column has appeared in our spreadsheet. And you can see that label one is currently applied as value zero on every vertex in the mesh. And that's because the value here is set to zero. If I now set it to one, you'll see that this value has now been applied to every single point in the mesh. But of course, applying this value to every single point isn't that useful. We need to isolate it with a selection. So I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to search for random. Let's grab a random value node, put it here. I'm going to set the output to Boolean, and that's going to give me an on or off value that can be used to define a selection. With that done, let's just plug that into the selection input of the store named attribute node. And you can see what's changed here in the spreadsheet. Some points have the value set to one and others have it set to zero. But I don't want to apply this attribute to points. I actually want to apply them to faces. So I'm just going to change the mode here from point to face. And you can see now that that has changed the spreadsheet up here. And if I go to the faces, you'll see that some of them have the value randomly applied. So now that I've defined where the attribute is set, I can reuse it later. Let's hit Shift A and search for extrude. I'm going to grab an extrude mesh and just drop it here. Then I'm going to hit Shift A again, and I'm going to search for attribute. Let's select the named attribute node. Let's select label one from the options that we have. And in order to actually use this to define a selection, I'm going to need a compare node. So let's hit Shift A and search for compare. Drop a compare node in here. I'm going to set it to equal. Let's drag the output of the attribute and plug it into the A value and set the B value to one. Then I can take the result of the compare node and plug it into the selection input of the extrude mesh node. I'll set the offset to something smaller like 0.1. And you can see that we're now randomly extruding the mesh based on this random value parameter here. And if I change the seed, you'll see that the extrusion changes accordingly. And one thing that's really critical to understand is that this label that we've applied doesn't just exist here in the node editor, it's actually applied to the mesh and we can use it in other contexts. So I'm just going to select these nodes. Let's drag everything this way to give ourselves a little bit more room and drag these to the left to do the same thing. Then I'm just going to grab these two nodes and hit Shift D to duplicate them. I'm going to daisy chain all the connections so that we have this in the middle. And I'm going to call this label two. 
And with that done, I'm going to change the seed of the random value node. And if we take a look in the spreadsheet, we can see we have two columns. One is label one, the next one is label two, and they have different values applied in each. And that data now exists on the mesh. So I'm gonna to switch to a shader editor. I'm also gonna go into a shaded view. And here is the material that's applied to the cube. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and search for mix. Let's just drop a mix color node here. Plug that into the base color input of the material. And let's just set the A color to black and the B color to white. And so if I change the factor, we can change the cube from black to white. But of course, we're not gonna do it this way. We're gonna drive it. So I hit Shift A and I'm gonna search for attribute. Grab an attribute node and I'm gonna take the fact output of that node and plug it into the factor input of my mix node. And here I'm just gonna type label two. And lo and behold, you can see we're now using this label to drive the color of our material. And of course, you can use this in any number of different ways as selection, as a tag, or as a way to pass any kind of information down the pipe. So for example, you could store position information and reuse that later. And let me show you how that would work. I'm gonna go back to the geometry nodes editor. Let's make a little bit of room here on the left-hand side. I hit Shift A and search for store named attribute. And I'll drop a new store named attribute node right here. And this time I'm going to set it to vector. Then I hit Shift A, search for position. I'm gonna drop a position input node right here. Plug it into the value input of the store named attribute node. And I'm gonna call this recall. So what exactly is happening here? Well, this node is storing the position of all of the geometry at this point in the graph prior to the extrusion. And that means that I can take this stored position data and recall it later. So let's just move this over here, search for set. I'm gonna grab a set position node and I'm gonna drop it right here. Now remember, these input nodes are just instructions. They don't store any data. So if I was to take the output of this position node and plug it into the position input of my set position node, nothing's gonna happen. Because this is just an instruction to look at the position data at this point in the graph where it's being read. But this store named attribute node is storing the position with the value recall at this point in the graph. So if I hit Shift A and search for named attribute, I can grab the named attribute node, set it to vector, choose recall from the list, and plug the output into the position input of my set position node. And as you can see, that is recalling the position of the geometry where it was stored. And if I want, I can even mix between the two states. So if I hit Shift A and search for mix, I'm gonna drop a mix node here, set it to vector. I'm just gonna quickly reorganize the workspace. I can take the position input, plug it into value A, and take the stored position and plug that into value B, then connect that to the position input of the set position node, and then I can modulate between the two using the factor slider. So in this context, the store named attribute node is working in a similar way to the capture attribute node, but the store named attribute node is much more flexible. So I hope this video has helped to demystify this extremely useful node, and that concludes this video. I'll see you in the next one.